I want to say welcome for all of you who are here. First, for the uh, members of the church, we are thrilled you're here. And I want to remind you that we do this on Sunday morning also, where it's, where it's air conditioned. Uh, also want to uh, welcome, we have members uh, representing the Presbytery, uh, our fellow pastors, uh, Adrian Dahl and David Dindy. We're thrilled that you're here. Thank you for your support. Uh, we have uh, members of the team that are helping us build this, uh, people from uh, Civil Works, who I believe, Woo! who I believe are doing the first part, right? We'll be setting the level in the playing field, so to speak. Uh, we have uh, our mem members from our architecture, NIT architecture. Woohoo! And of course, there's a number of people here from Burke Construction, the construction company who we believe is the finest construction company in town. And thank you for being here. And I also want to take uh, a moment and have you recognize and say hello to uh, Mac McBride. And Mac is in the back with the uh, Hawaiian shirt on. Mac. Mac is our owner representative, and basically his job description is to help the pastors not look stupid when it comes to uh, construction projects. So we are thrilled. Uh, every one of these people who've helped with the project bring real professionalism and experience in building churches, and we couldn't be more proud to partner with you. Um, I want to uh, begin us with a word of prayer. God, we thank you that you are working in our community and we ask a blessing on this piece of property. May it be, become a building and a facility that serves this community, bringing hope and good news. May this building be used to reach out to those who are in need. May this building minister to those who need help. May we be drawn closer to you and a witness in this community. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 So let me tell you what's going to happen here. Uh, I've asked the people who have been part of the planning of this for these so many years uh, to just give a very brief statement of what their vision for this building is, what they hope will happen. Uh, when when if we finish that, uh, we're going to those people will be the first to turn some dirt and then each of you if you want are welcome to come up and uh, turn a shovel of dirt because you are part of this project i mean let's be honest you're paying for it so yeah at least gonna turn some dirt right uh, uh, sorry i lost my notes um I, uh, I want to say that we started this process 12 years ago, 2012. Um, that's when we hired our first lawyer because the state had officially released its plans um, that the original plan said the freeway would go right through the church. Uh, we had been hearing about that for 10 years prior. And so when they, we got the plans, we hired our first attorney. We've been through two attorneys and two lawsuits uh, to come to this agreement with the state that we could move our building. And uh, that brings us to where we are today. And I'm grateful for everybody who's faithfully worked on this. My vision for the church is it will be a place where the doors are open and the community comes in, where we will bring hope and good news, where People will be provided with resources and opportunity where we will be a witness in our community. And being that we are Scottish in heritage, uh, I wrote a Celtic blessing for the church. Take it for what it's worth. May the walls of this church be filled with love and laughter. May it reach from floor to rafter. May the roof keep out the rain and the sunshine warm each pane. May the doors be open wide. May God's love and grace be found inside. Amen. 
also ask for Bruce Laird, who has been our clerk of session, who has helped to lead us through this process. Bring a blessing also. Thank you, Pastor. My vision for this facility, because we are the church, my vision for this facility is not only as a house of worship, but a home for learning. I had a 34-year career in education, retired 20 years ago, but I consider myself a lifelong educator. And so, look forward to people coming and learning about God's love, God's mercy, and above all, God's grace. Amen. Scott Plummer, who chairs the building committee and co-chairs the building committee. Jim Hardy already uh, announced a little bit about the uh, length of time that we've been working on this. <laughs> I had a lot more hair back then <laughs> when we started, uh, reason for the hard hat, but I am just uh, uh, thrilled to, to, to speak today, uh, and I promise it will be less than half an hour. Um, we're all e excited to be out here in our new home. But I just want to acknowledge a little bit, uh, 1515 West Charleston, uh, we're happy to leave it, but we're also going to be sad. The amount of ministry that went on there for 70 years and, and counting, and I, I, I just, I, a lot of the people that we've lost along the way who were instrumental to get us here today, I just want to acknowledge the, the ministry that has gone on there. So my prayer and blessing for this property would be that that the ministry would continue and that 50 years from now, there'll be three or four new generations of Presbyterians here that will look back and say, how did they do that? <laughs> how did they get that done? Because that's what I've been asking myself uh, for the last 10 years is how do churches get built? Anyway, that's my prayer and blessing and thanks, all, thanks to all of you for coming. Adrian O'Donoghue who serves as our uh, moderator of the Deacons. My wish for our new church is that we have a whole new set of problems. That Lisa has so many people in her choir that she's going to have to have a choir A, a choir B, a choir C. That Rhonda Reeves. Well, have, she's going to be like the old lady in the shoe. She's going to have so many children, she won't know what to do. And Jim and uh, Craig will fret over how many services can we get in on a Saturday and Sunday because they're always crowded. That would be my, my wish and my dream. Now we're going to be moving soon. <laughs> but uh, my wish and dream, with God's help, would be that we would continue our fabulous tradition of choral music that we have in this town, and that we would continue our outreach into the classical music that we've got going, and that our game program for children, that we would have fabulous music education for many, many uh, families in this area. And um, thank you. I hope we have choir A, B, C, D. Absolutely. Thanks again. Rhonda couldn't be with us. Rhonda is the director of Children and Youth Family Ministries. She left this morning with 24 youth uh, on our annual mystery trip. Uh, the, the kids don't know where they're going, but they'll wake up this morning at Ma Magic Mountain. Tomorrow they'll be at the Reagan Library, so they're going to have fun and be educated. So they're spending the week in Southern California. Craig? Um, I'm reminded of uh, the people who are passing by. Do you hear that one person, big old honk? That was a honk for Presbyterians who love Jesus. So that was our first of many. I am so glad to be a part of this. You have labored a lot longer than I have, but it's, uh, it's a year from now that we're going to be in. Right, guys? Yeah. Right? Right? Dimitri, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Good, good. You saw them all shake their heads, right? Mac, you saw them all shake their heads. Yeah. Right on. Um, I'm glad to be a part of you, and I'm glad that we're a part of Christ, and that we get to lift up Christ's name to this community and to the Greater Valley of Las Vegas, and that uh, um, his name will be praised. This life isn't very long. It's soon will be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. 
is one of the things that I say to myself every morning when I wake up. So I'm going to pray, but I'd love for us to just give thanks in a way. So I'd love for us to sing the doxology. Lisa, can we do that? Okay, great. Well, I, I always want to give permission for the music person. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. you look down on us and you are the author of everything you're the author of this place we ask that you would set your mark upon it as you set your mark upon so many things when uh, the children of Israel went through the wilderness and came out on the other side and crossed the river Jordan when uh, um, Jesus came into this world and marked his church and in the history of the church now, 2,000 plus years later, we just pray that we will honor your name in everything that we do. And Lord, this is your dirt we're turning. So uh, uh, bless it and make it abundant. Make it a soil that, that uh, gives 10, 20, 60, and 100 fold. That people may come to name your name and that we will uh, turn to one another when we're in heaven and give thanks for this place that we were able to do ministry. In your name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, I'd like to invite those up who were the first who spoke to be the first to turn a shovel. Also, I wonder if it'd be, if you would mind, if I invited up some of our principals. Danny from Knit, where are you, Danny? There you are. Uh, would you be willing to turn a shovel with us? And Mr. Burke? No? We have a hat up here. <laughs> would you like to turn a shovel of dirt with us? Yes, sir. That would be great. Harold, you got the picture? No, sir. It's nice and blue just for us. Picture of your pastors you get to see shoveling it. <laughs> no, we see that every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming.